Hello everyone, in this video we'll be having a look at the pause slash inventory menu. So here we are back in our project and first things first I want to um, address one little thing um, that got mentioned before. Um, basically saying, um, you know, when it comes to our uh, hero, um, whenever I quit the editor next time it's not there and you know everything is reset simply because the save feature needs to be turned on and you know it will work for you cool so um, let's get back to our main scene so what I've decided to do here and again check the check the description please um, I added a package and uh, the reason for that package um, is quite simply that setting up a menu um, slash <laughs> Um, you know inventory is it's tedious it's long-winded it's not fun uh, I don't enjoy doing that at all and I especially don't enjoy doing it on video where it takes 10 times as long um, so I decided to um, do it beforehand package it um, I'll quickly show you what it looks like um, and again keep in mind that um, you know this is not about um, the actual inventory items this is simply about what's in the inventory so um, we have um, the categories again like the next video is going to be the inventory video and that's where we'll set up some inventory items as well for a game um, so this is more about you know how the menu functions um, so we have our filters then we have um, you know here we have some slots not sure we might you know place those somewhere else um, we have our uh, coin system we have the exit um, then you know if we press the tab button again it will open you can change it to whatever you want um, then we have our settings here as well so we have a quick save feature which literally quick saves we have save game which allows you to save games in different slots um, we have load game which loads the games and we have our options as well um, which allows us to um, change all of our options and then title screen, you know reverse back to title screen uh, as well So it's a uh, it's quite the uh, complete setup um, Try to make the style as similar to um, Tears of the kingdom as possible. So it looks incredibly incredibly similar um, the description is going to be here of the items as well So again really really similar um, No, it won't be exactly the same. Yes. Yeah, some of the controls might be slightly different um, but you know, it's uh, it's not literally cloning uh, the game, right? Um, <clears throat> so let's have a quick look um, at how this works. So once you import the package, um, first thing you need to do is <clears throat> on the player, let's actually collapse all of this. Um, so on the player, we need to add a bag and that's really simple. So you do components um, bag it's already there um, and then for the equipment I'm just using the default one from the examples you can create your own you know do whatever you want um, I'm just using the default one when it comes to um, the skin UI um, this is definitely the important thing um, that's where we're going to add our custom one but I quickly want to go over this so um, the remember components um, we have position, rotation, skill all by default, um, but we also want to add the bag here. So, you know, it just, uh, it's it's here. So yeah, quite important, um, you know, you add that as well, because otherwise it won't be saved. Really cool that it's all in the same place now, really like that. Um, cool, so then when it comes to the inventory, again, I'm just using what is by default, um, you know add it however we're using our own prefab here so that's what you'll see in the package um, it's our own custom prefab um, and once we open this up um, you'll get this so this is where we'll get the money um, this is where the display is so it overlays um, just like in uh, tears of the kingdom overlays the character model um, the character model that we see in the inventory is actually part of the inventory as well so again um, you know, keep in mind that if you have a different model, you will need to replace the model uh, in here with your own model. If you're not following exactly along, just something to keep in mind um, that you'll need to do that yourself. 
so you'll need to replace it with whatever you are uh, whatever you are using um, cool then um, what else so yeah the character is part of it so let me quickly show you a uh, character is part of it it's incredibly high um, you know it's here in the scene um, has its own little light here as well uh, and cube so it doesn't fall and uh, that's pretty much it so it's a separate character um, the character has all of the same conditions as the player which we did in the last video so you know it basically checks all of the same and what we're going to do in the next proper inventory video is we'll make sure that everything that applies to the player also applies to this character and of course we'll do that with uh, the global variable which we're already using here so um, when it comes to how this is set up um, this is literally the same as the um, inventory examples I did do my own animator with animation simply because I'm not a really big fan of the the elements moving around uh, it's not really for me so this simply does the canvas group and that's it so pretty basic um, we have our graphics manager of course um, for the settings um, and let's uh, let's actually switch to 2d let's have a proper look um, we have the buttons uh, as well which again are um, for now even the same icons um, you can replace the icons with whatever you want um, however one of the important things is that I actually added a button without any doesn't do any color effects or anything like that on top of the default list uh, tab uh, actions which basically does these settings uh, reason for that is because well settings is the odd one out here even though it will look exactly the same in the game um, obviously functionality wise is completely different um, we can no longer control um, you know filter with actions it's all done with um, this custom component uh, meaning I had to find a workaround to basically make sure that settings could play along um, I think that's the right way to put it um, so this gets disabled um, this gets disabled um, when we press um, when we press that image uh, that uh, settings icon system icon so we disable details menu options and menu to get turned on and we disable this uh, scroll basically houses all of the inventory items here um, so that gets disabled as well um, and we enable that by default on all of these and the reason for that is really simple because if you're on settings and you want to press this for example um, you know you should be able to do that at once doesn't matter you know it shouldn't just be this one or this one um, it should go there by default so yeah um, and then when it comes to the menu and menu options um, obviously I had to change how that worked as well compared to uh, compared to before so we have a quick save um, so let's have a look at that <coughs> which basically just saves on the first slot really simple um, save game opens up a new menu um, which basically is the opposite kind of of um, the load game um, we have the load game we have uh, options and all of these are now as you can see using uh, a group um, with a, a viewport with a scroll ma a scroll bar just to make sure it all fits in a smaller surface area than by default um, which I thought was, you know, the only plausible solution because, you know, you don't want to lose options, but it can't take as much space as it did before. Um, then we have a confirm for going back to the title screen. Obviously, you don't want to just quit straight away. Um, so we needed to make sure that was a confirm for that as well. So, yeah, it's, um, you know, have a look, go through it. Obviously, a lot is um, similar to uh, the default prefab. Um, the menu options are similar to uh, the menu video we did before uh, keep in mind you need that menu video uh, menu you need to have done that menu video uh, first because otherwise um, none of the options stuff will work it's relying on the same systems not going to replicate that um, so yeah it's uh, 
incredibly tedious to do. It's not fun. I don't enjoy it. Um, originally, I wanted to do a background blur, like in Tears of the Kingdom. Unfortunately, 2020 LTS has changed something in the way a full screen rendering works, meaning none of the tutorials I could find on doing UI blur were functional anymore um, in 2022 LTS. So yeah, that will uh, that's something you'll have to do on your own. Um, and I would actually suggest waiting until um, you can find a tutorial on that as, um, again, 2022 has changed some of the full screen rendering. So yeah, rather unfortunate. Um, so yeah, um, other than that, obviously in the package, you know, we have the background, which literally is one full background that, um, you know, has the Breath of the Tears of the Kingdom look. I'm actually really happy they changed uh, the way the menus work in Tears of the Kingdom versus Breath of the Wild, because I never really liked the Breath of the Wild uh, in-game menu. I thought it looked quite terrible. So yeah, really happy with uh, with this change. Um, obviously, we don't have to do it the same, but it's nice to at least try to get um, somewhere the same feel. Um, it's uh, Then we have the global variable. Um, this is quite important as well, so I'll address that in a bit in the scene view. Um, but basically what we're doing when we press the um, toolbar close. Um, so when we're opening the menu, we're setting all of the... Uh, camera settings, which I'll show right now. So uh, make sure to change that here as well. So in the input sensitivity X and Y, you need to change this to um, variable, uh, global name variable, and then drag in menu global. Um, and for both of them, um, these are the same values. So 180 is the default value, nothing changes. Um, however, in the second prefab, which you need to drag on the player, um, we set that to zero. So that means that, you know, we can't turn the camera around. There's no simple toggle anymore to just turn it off like in Game Creator 1. Um, so we need to do it this way um, by changing the values. And then inside of this prefab uh, on close, um, we're setting those values back to 180 for it to be the same as normal. And we also have player controllable. Um, which is um, turned off um, by default as well. Um, I hope by the time of the next video, I'll have a better solution for this. Um, but unfortunately, this player just seems to drop to the ground all the time and then get up. Um, this character, really annoying. So my solution was to um, wait a second, basically for uh, the rock image to be visible. It's not elegant. Um, it just looks it's better um, but it's not a great solution so hopefully by the time of the next video um, I will have a better solution for that um, but yeah so far I just couldn't get into just you know stay still <laughs> proper annoying anyway um, so yeah that's that's honestly pretty much it um, you know everything else of course like aligning it and changing the way it looks um, you know, we'll be messing around a lot more with it once we set up the inventory items anyway. Um, I did make a couple of changes, so as you can see, there's no weight. Um, you know, Zelda doesn't have that either in Tears of the Kingdom, as far as I could see. Um, and I personally always find it annoying. If you want weight back, like a maximum weight, just grab it from the default prefab and just drag it back in. Um, but yeah, personally, I didn't really enjoy that. Um, however, if you want it back in, drag it back in from the default prefab and, um, you know, make sure in details, I think it is, um, that you assign the weight again um, on the text image. But yeah, I'm personally never really a fan of weight. Um, but yeah, it's just something you can do. And I think on, yeah, on the player has max uh, weight, um, that's a value you can set. Personally, I, I just don't like it. I don't like a weight system. I always find it really annoying, um, but it's up to you. You can add that back if you want, um, just to check out uh, the defaults, basically. Um, so yeah, that's, that's actually pretty much it. Um, so yeah, like I mentioned before, the second prefab needs to be added as well. So that's this one, um, and just drag it onto the, the player. Um, you can change the key to anything else. Um, 
And yeah, so it's not a long video. I just spent an incredibly amount of time uh, actually setting this up, making it work. Um, I didn't mess around with inventory that much before um, when it came to the UI stuff. Um, and it, it's just quite different compared to Game Creator 1. So actually it took me a while to figure out how to do um, things for inventory 2 when it comes to the UI. Um, really looking forward to the next video where we actually set up some of the inventory stuff. Um, because uh, Game Creator 2 has improved a lot compared to the first one. It's just become so much better. Um, it's just with the UI stuff, there was a lot of figuring out how to do it um, as it's just really, really different. Um, but yeah, uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.